Hey everyone, it's me, uh, Drew. I'm with my doctor, Dr. Willie, again. Uh, we are going over my lab results from my uh, test that I took around November 5th, which is uh, towards the end of my fit to fat stage. So we're, we're creating these baselines, and then we'll track this each month on my journey back to fit. And I really, really encourage all of us to, um, to be working with a doctor on this journey so that we can not only see you know, our, our, how, many, how many pounds we lose, but also you know, from, from a medical perspective, um, how our bodies are changing throughout this journey. And uh, there's some improvement actually in some areas because the last week I, uh, I was walking like around like New York and LA um, and I didn't have time to eat as much, so my calories were a lot less than they normally were, which is why I, which is why I lost four pounds in my last week. So, um, anyways, so it was, it was fun. It was cool time to. Yeah. Our lab review was much better too. I looked at, I was like, uh -oh. something. <laughs> yeah. He did something majorly different. Here. It was the last week. Yeah, I just I didn't have time to eat, and I was walking around a lot more. Um, like for example, New York, we walked around for like two hours trying to find clothes that fit me. LDL particle size improved, so they went from small dense to larger buoyant, which are more cardioprotective versus cardio damaging. Okay. Um, your inflammatory mediators all improved because you were out there walking, walking around. Walking around, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> exercise and inflammation, yeah, it's huge. Your insulin was way high, much higher than it was wow. before, um, which is truly affected by your diet. So, so this, this kind of folds into my theory that your insulin levels were quote unquote normal last time, but still triple your normal. Right. So if we did your um, insulin levels, I almost guarantee a year ago, your number was two. Yeah. Our last blood draw was eight on 9-29-11, and now you're 51. So you've become a hyperinsulin secretor. Okay. So you're still a little insulin resistance because of the extra weight, but now I think you're a hyper secretor too, making up for all the, the uh, junk. Okay. Uh, your plate size. Now here's the interesting lab. This is the one I'm just <laughs> absolutely fascinated with. Okay. This is your liver ultrasound you did. And you, sir, have a large fatty liver. Really? You might, I know no you don't way. drink, but you should have been drinking the last 30 years because you have the same <laughs> liver. Really? Yep. Oh my gosh. So this is, this is, so, this is fascinating to me because this is something we preach in bariatrics all the time. We have to heal your liver for you to lose weight. Right. Because the, the changes, this is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If we biopsy it, we could, may get the uh, uh, disease called NASH, which stands for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Um, it's like the only difference between the pathology you have and someone who drinks is the alcohol, yeah. but the liver effects are the same. Wow. When this occurs, your insulin goes screwy, you get type 2 diabetes, you become insulin resistant, your cardiac factors go to, all the risk <laughs> factors go up. So yeah. this is the first step to America's chronic disease problem. When we do this, 11-3, yep. let's do this after Thanksgiving. Okay. Let's do it then. Let's do it. We'll give it one month and see okay. how it's healed in one month. Okay. But absolutely fascinating. And this is a great oh, thing man. for your audience is, <laughs> guys, fix your liver. Yeah. Get off this stuff. Fix your liver. You'll start losing weight. Yeah. If you've ever been the type that have dieted, dieted, and never lost weight, well, you never took time to heal your liver. Right. Pretty powerful. Yeah.